God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Bread. I'm the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520 heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Sunday morning service, along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peaches, Sister Selena, and her beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole, and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly, my brother, Harry Evans, and we want to continue to remember his wife, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went on to be with the Lord on March the 4th of 2022. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her. And I thank God for the opportunity to have met her before he called her home in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining my sister's church, Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, pastor by the phenomenal minister Kenya King and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. You ought to join them and be blessed. God bless you, Sister King. I love you. God bless you, Sister Tanisha Pratt. I love you. Got a phenomenal word for us today. A word that's going to change the way you understand the word of God. I promise you. Hallelujah. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube. There are over 400 messages on my YouTube channel. Hallelujah. You ought to join them and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Highly anointed messages that teach you the word of God. That teach you the word of God. That feeds you the word of God. Because that is what we as believers are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be feasting on the word of God. The, the, the purpose for, for coming to church, the purpose for Listening to any preacher preach the word of God is not to say that you went to church. It's not to say, tell somebody what you heard or learned in church. The purpose of you being here today, the purpose of you going to any church service, the purpose of you hearing any man of God is to be for you to meet Christ. God bless you, Dick and Stevenson. I love you. If, if the people will understand that the purpose for the church is for us to meet and feast on the Lord, then you will see believers living a more prosperous, beautiful, Holy Ghost filled life. Hallelujah. Today's message. Today's message, I'm, I'm going to tell you, today's message is going to correct a bunch of miscellaneous, incorrect teaching about the Word of God. Today's message, the illness, the illness, the unhealthy condition, the definition of the word illness is an unhealthy condition of the body and mind. The unhealthy condition of stubbornness. Definition of the word stubbornness is something that's difficult to remove or cure. The definition of the word difficult is not easy to please or satisfy. For some unknown reason, it's just not, it's just God just, just cannot please or satisfy some of us, and the reason for that is because we are still contaminated with the illness of stubbornness. Hallelujah. Our foundational verse today is Mark chapter 6, verse 5 through 6. It reads on this wise. It says, and salvation, that is who Jesus is. This verse says, and Jesus could not. So I'm going to go on and put salvation where we could go on and call it Jesus because Jesus is salvation. And salvation could there do no mighty works in the city that Jesus was from, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. 
and salvation marveled. Jesus marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about villages teaching. The key thing you need to understand in these verses is he went round about the villages teaching. Notice it does not say healing because of an illness of stubbornness that just won't believe that he is the word of God made flesh. Hallelujah. Let us pray and then God is going to show us something today that you've never heard before. And after today's message, you should, you should have a whole different outlook the next time you pick up a Bible to read it. The next time you listen to the Bible over some speaker or in your car, it, you're going to have a different outlook. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I'm not even going to be long with my prayer because I want to go on and let you go on and, and feed your people what they need to be fed. I thank you for the revelation knowledge that you give me through scripture. I thank you for the time that I spend with you, that you enlighten my mind to the point to where I can't even grasp what you're saying to me, but I sure do appreciate the illumination. I thank you for the opportunity to stand in the place of a pastor. I thank you for the opportunity to minister your word to people that are hungry for your word, knowing that I'm no different than them, no more anointed than them, no more saved than them, no more faithful than them. It's all because I allow your word to have the preeminence in my life. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. The illness of stubbornness. Let us go into this word. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, reads on this wise. The apostle Paul says, let this mind. Now, I don't know how many times we got to read the Bible to, to, and, and to know that the Bible is, is, is always addressing man's mind because there's something wrong with man's mind. In the, in the, in, in, because man's mind is where stubbornness has rooted itself. And so Paul has to tell us that we're supposed to let this mind that is in us be the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Who is Christ Jesus? He is the word of God made flesh. The reason why Paul instructs us to let Christ's mind be in us is because we have an illness in our mind, an unhealthy condition of body or mind. We have this sickness, this illness of stubbornness. Our entire earth suit is corrupted with this illness, is corrupted with this spirit of stubbornness. Romans 7 and 18 says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh. God bless you, Sister Selene. I love you this morning. We're talking about the illness of stubbornness today. Paul says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Notice this, see, this is where the word of God, you got to grasp this. Paul says, I know that in me that is in my flesh. He, so he, he says nothing about that this stubbornness is in his soul. But because we are slaves to the flesh because of the fall of Adam, we, have, we now are governed by the flesh rather than governing the flesh. Paul says, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. This verse is speaking strictly about the mind, about the mind of the flesh, that there's nothing good in it. And, and, and we still try to figure out why 
we as well as other born again believers just can't get it together when it comes to obeying the living word of God. Stubbornness, something that is difficult to remove or cure, it's, it's, it says it's, it's not easy to please. It, 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 doesn't, it does not say that it is that you cannot remove it or cure it. It just says it's difficult because God is having a, a, a difficult time getting us to live in obedience to his word. It is an illness in every carnally minded person. Stubbornness, watch this, stubbornness should never be found in the life of a believer. It is the opposite of faith. Stubbornness is the opposite of faith. See, just as well as stubbornness is something that's difficult to remove or cure, your faith should be something that is difficult for Satan to remove or cure. It should be difficult for him to remove it. But faith can be shipwrecked. Faith can be shipwrecked. So Timothy tells us in 1 Timothy 1 and 19, he says, cling to your faith in Christ. Watch this, I'm finna, I'm finna mess y'all up. It says, it does not say cling to your faith in the Holy Bible. Don't worry about it, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna do this. after today's message, Y'all gonna, you gonna, man, God messed me up with this thing. Cling to your faith in Christ, not in the Bible, to your faith in Christ. So you, so once you, once you learn something, once you learn something, you cling to the faith in that. Once you get, once a, once a mechanic becomes a mechanic, he, he, he no longer needs the mechanic book. He clings on to the life that, that mechanical book taught him. So he goes out and becomes a great mechanic without ever having to return to the book again because the book has, because the life that was, that was in that book now lives in his conscience. So through our faith in Christ, we supposed to cling to it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What have you heard and whatever it is you've heard from the word of God, you need to be clinging to it. So that you can keep your conscience clear. For some people, born again believers, this verse is talking about born again believers. Because if, because if, it, if, if, if it wasn't talking to, to born again believers, then Timothy wouldn't have started it off with cling to your faith in Christ because unbelievers don't got faith in Christ. So first Timothy, Timothy's talking to born again. He's talking to us. He says cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some, some believers have deliberately violated their consciences you know you know they you know, you know they violate their conscience because they be, because they become stubborn towards the truth that they know the truth that they know they they they, they become stubborn to it and in the stubbornness is is very difficult to to remove or to, or to cure so god created the cross to kill the flesh so that the soul can live on, can live a life of faith rather than a life of stubbornness. For some people have deliberately, I mean, they. this verse says deliberately, they have deliberately violated their consciences as a result their faith has been shipwrecked. The thing preventing us from clinging to faith is stubbornness. Something that's difficult to remove or cure. The illness of stubbornness manifests itself by many names. So in Mark chapter 5 verse 9, this, 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 this young man had, these, had these, this, this, a bunch of demons in him. So when Jesus started asking this, this, this demons, what was their name? So they asked him salvation. And I said, 
what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, meaning a vast host, multitude, or a number of things. Sis, sis, a number of things making y'all stubborn when it comes to the word of God. That's making it difficult and not easy for God to keep you in a state of faithfulness, in a state of obedience. My name is Legion, for we are many. So many different tactics Satan is using. Oh yes, Sister Selena, a stiff-necked people. Samuel told Samuel told King Saul. He said, "He says uh, that that uh, that um that stubbornness is just the rebellion of witchcraft." It is better to obey than to sacrifice. The reason why we don't obey and, and stubbornness keeps making us sacrifice for something that we should not be sacrificing for because Christ was sacrificed for our sins. Cain had his own stubbornness. Lot's wife had her own stubbornness. Samson had his own stubbornness. Achan had his own stubbornness. All flesh-born men are stubborn. Cain heard the word of God. Lot's wife heard the word of God. Samson heard the word of God. Achan heard the word of God. All flesh has heard the word of God, including Pastor Red. First John 1 and 8 says, if we say that we have no sin, if we say that we have no stubbornness, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Hallelujah. A believer who is infected by the illness of stubbornness, who's, who's, who's infected by a lot of different things, will show no signs of improvement in their life after hearing the word of God for many years, but still live by an untransformed mind. The believer that's infected by the illness of stubbornness will show no signs of improvement in their life. They will, they will, they will be a believer. They, they still the same person today that they was when they claimed Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of their life. They will show no signs of improvement. They'll still go out and commit adultery. They'll still go out and still kill and destroy. They'll still go out and join stupid groups and organizations. They'll still go out and, and start arguments with everybody. They'll still jump on different political uh, uh, parties. They'll, they'll still uh, choose which side to be on. They will show no signs of improvement. They are a stiff-necked people, as Sister Selena wrote. They will show no signs of improvement, even after hearing the word of God for many years, but still live by an untransformed mind. Paul says in Romans 12 and 2, do not be conformed to this world. If you be conformed to this world, you will operate in a stubborn mindset. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Watch this right here. Every time you see a butterfly, I'm going to tell you from this day forward, from this day forward, every time you see a butterfly, I want you to say to yourself, I want you to say to yourself, that caterpillar was void of stubbornness. Don't see the butterfly as a butterfly. See the butterfly 
in this born again state. A but when you see a butterfly, you see a born again caterpillar. God bless you, Pastor King. Stop seeing a butterfly as a butterfly. See that joker as a dead caterpillar. The next time you see a butterfly, say to yourself, that caterpillar was not void of stubbornness. That caterpillar knew it had to die in order to fly. The caterpillar knew that in order to fly, it had to die. Today's believers lack this mindset. We lack the mindset to die to sin and to live to God through Christ Jesus. We lack it. And what's causing us to lack this mindset is stubbornness. Something that's difficult to remove or care from the mind of men. And the believers today are so stubborn. We want to be saved. We want to be saved and we want everlasting life. But we refuse to let the word of God transform us into the image of living epistles. Here we go, I'm finna go into my teaching. We refuse to let the word of God transform us into living epistles because we're stubborn. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 says, Ye are our living epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of men. You and I, as born-again believers, we are living epistles. The word of God is written in our hearts, and, and we are known and read of all men. Your life is a living epistle, a letter that shines the life of God. Living life abundantly, taking new steps to grow, sowing good seeds of Christ, a life that takes the gospel around the world, a life that impacts others for God. You are the only Bible some people are ever going to read. You are an example. You are the only Bible. You ought to know that. You ought to know that based off of how much you read the Bible. So if you call yourself a born-again believer and you don't hardly read the Bible, then what in the world makes you think that person that ain't a born-again believer, what makes you think they even reading the Bible? Oh, get you a mirror. Get you a mirror. You know how much you read the Bible. You know how much you listen to the Bible. You know how precious the Bible is to you. Because there's something about the Bible that you're going to learn today from today's teaching. You, you're the only Bible some people are ever going to read. What is it about the Bible that we need to read, that we need to allow in it to become our life, so that when people see our life, they can read that life that's in the Bible. An unbeliever's stubbornness has kept them from reading the Bible. A believer's stubbornness has kept them from living the word of God. Oh yes, Sister Selena, I mean, Sister Tanisha Pratt, this word today is a wake up call. This word, watch, watch this word today. We, I'm, 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 y'all finna hear something on these next slides that's gonna mess up, cause it messed me up. Cause I, I was, I, I had it wrong. Even though I was living it, I still didn't understand it. But now I understand it. An unbeliever's stubbornness has kept them from reading the Bible. A believer's stubbornness has kept them from living the word of God. Notice I did not say the Bible. A believer's stubbornness has kept them from living the word of God, not from living the Bible. Because the Bible is not the word of God. Stubbornness has trained us to believe, watch this, Sister Lena, 
Pastor King, Deacon Stevenson, Sister Tanisha, watch this right here. The Bible, stubbornness has trained us to believe that the Bible is the word of God. There is no verse in scripture that says that the Bible is the word of God. There is no verse in scripture that says that the Bible is the word of God. Why? Why? Because John 5 and 39 tells us exactly what the Bible is. The Bible is 66 books of scripture. John 5 and 39 says, we are to search the scriptures for in the scriptures ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. The, because the Bible is a book of scriptures that testify of the word of God that we as believers must receive as our living. The Bible is not the word of God. It testifies to the word of God. The word of God is living and active. Hebrews 4 and 12. The Bible is not living and active because if it were, it cannot give us his life. It cannot give us his life. It's scripture and God has given us all scripture. The Bible is only scripture and God has given us all scripture for instructions in righteousness, for instructions in, in, in this life that we're supposed to be living. And that's why people can read the Bible. People been reading the Bible. People been walking with the Bible. People been listening to the Bible. People been getting taught the Bible. And they still can't live the life that the scripture speaks about. Running around, uh, run, running around with the Bible and committing adultery at the same time. Pastors in the pulpit married to other men at the same time. The Bible is, is useless if you're not going to live about the word that's in it. Revelations 10 and 9. The angel, John says, give me the little book. And then the angel said to me, he says, take and eat it. And it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be sweet as honey in your mouth. John 1 and 14 says, and the word was made flesh, hallelujah, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, his glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The reason why people ain't full of grace and truth today, Sister Selena, is because they're not eating the flesh of the Son of Man, but they read in the Bible. They talk Bible, but, but whatever the scriptures has taught them, they don't know how to live it. They won't let it live in them. The Bible means, the Bible is useless if you ain't gonna take what's on the inside of it and live it. Do you know what y'all wanna y'all wanna go to college? You wanna get a, an associate's degree, you wanna get a bachelor's degree, you wanna go to some stupid biblical seminary school, you wanna tell people that you got a bachelor's degree in theology, you wanna tell them that you a doctorate in theology, you wanna tell them you are this, but you can't live what you got taught in. Because all you're doing is getting a bunch of knowledge that's keeping you stubborn. Oh yeah, Satan knows and quotes the Bible. You ain't, you ain't fooling nobody. We are living epistles read of men. And, and if you ain't living scripture, if you ain't living scripture, the reason why you ain't living it is because of an illness of stubbornness. The living word of God. The word of God is living and active. The Bible is not living and it ain't active. It needs to, the Bible, the, the, whatever, whatever's in the Bible needs to get on the inside of you. 
and it begins to live its way on the outside of you. You act like you ain't never read your Bible. If you'll read the Bible that I'm reading, I'm reading this Bible every day. I'm listening to this Bible every day. And when I listen to it, all I hear is saying is the word of the God came unto, the word of the Lord came unto, the word of the Lord came unto. The Bible is telling us that the word of the Lord is coming, but we ain't receiving it because we got an illness of stubbornness about ourselves. God bless you, Stella. I love you. When are you going to stop? When are you going to stop allowing stubbornness to prevent you from walking in obedience to the word of God? Because cause, cause the Bible ain't the Bible ain't helping you. The Bible ain't doing y'all no good. The Bible ain't helping y'all. Y'all still going off on people. Y'all still cursing people out. Y'all still lying on people. Y'all still joining stupid organizations. You still representing this. You still representing that. You still go hang out with these people. You still go hang out with them people. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Y'all still go out there and get with them. And you know why you do it? Because you're stubborn. Because you because, because it's because cause God is having the God is having the hard hardest time to get saved to keep saved people saved. Man, God saved Lot and his wife, but his wife didn't want to be saved. She was too she was too stubborn to do what her husband and her daughters did. Achan was too stubborn to do what. All the other Israelites did. You think, man, you ain't man, you ain't the only person that, that, that wanted to take somebody to Jericho. Man, you ain't the only person. Man, you ain't the only person that man, man of God, you ain't the only person that other women are after. Woman of God, you ain't the only woman that other men are after. Stubbornness. Oh yeah, stubbornness feels good to our flesh. Thank you, Sister Selena, because you're taking me right into where I want to go. Hallelujah. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture. The Old Testament and the New Testament is given by inspiration of God. But you got two men. You got uncrucified men and then you got crucified men. You got the nation. You got the Israelites versus the Gentiles. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know what though? Y'all will take the Bible and y'all will take scripture and you'll use it to get profitable. That's why you got all these stupid mega churches because they're profiting off of the scripture for reproof. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't, you don't want the reproof. You don't want Pastor Red and them uh, chewing you out, but we don't, um, but that ain't chewing you out. I'm trying to get you to understand that you got to live the word of God that you're hearing in Scripture for correction. Don't let nobody try to correct you. Don't let nobody try to correct you with the word of God. No, because you, 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 you stubborn. You, 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 you set in your way. For instruction in righteousness, none but the righteous shall see God. So if none but the righteous shall see God, then God, I need you to give me some instructions in righteousness. And that instruction comes from his son. That the man of God, that the woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Scripture gives us instructions in righteousness. And our stubbornness won't follow them instructions, won't believe them instructions, won't obey them instructions. John 1 and 14. The word was made flesh. Here it is. I'm going to teach from the board here a little bit. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. No, no watch this right here. The word was made flesh. So what is flesh? What flesh? Flesh is something that we eat. We eat flesh. Okay? Okay? We eat flesh. John 6 and 54. The word says. The word says. Okay, we got John 1 and 14. The word was made flesh. 
And then this word that was made flesh that, that we eat, don't act like you don't eat no chicken. Don't act like you don't eat no beef. Don't act like you don't eat no pork. Don't act like you don't eat no fish. Don't act like you don't eat no deer. Don't act like you don't eat no rabbit. Don't act like you don't eat no buffalo. Don't act like you don't eat flesh. Know what flesh is. Just leave it what it is. Flesh is meat. The word says, the word that was made flesh says, this is the word talking. The word says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Because whatever you eat is giving you the power to go forth throughout that day. If you ain't eating and you hungry, you're not going to have no energy. You're going to find some, when you get hungry and you got money, you know you're going to go get you something to eat. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Philippians 2 and 7. I'm going to teach you. But watch this. But the word of God made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant. He took upon him the form of a servant. Well, 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 first of all, you got to understand, you got to ask yourself, what is a servant? When man fell in the garden, he became the servant of sin. He became the servant of sin. He's still a living soul, but he became a servant of sin in a body, contem in a body that the Lord calls flesh that is contaminated by stubbornness. So the Lord, the word of God, made himself of no reputation. He said, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna make myself reputable to what I really am. I'm gonna take upon myself the mindset of fallen man. And I'm going to be made in the likeness of men. I'm, I'm not going to be made as a man. I'm going to be made in the likeness of man, meaning I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to come down there and I'm going to have this mindset of a servant because, because our mindset of a, because our mindset is to serve because because when we fail, we, 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 we took on a servant mindset. And if you think I'm lying to you, then, 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 then why are you working then? Why are you working? Because in order to in order for you to go to work and you have a job, you're going to serve somebody. You getting a paycheck? I, I, I served Uncle Sam for 22 years. We understand the servant mindset. I want to know are you a servant to the living word of God that you hear from scripture. The life of God is written in scripture. If you're not going to live the life written in scripture, then scripture is garbage. Took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He was not made as a man. He was made in the likeness of men. Just like Genesis 1 and 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, but man didn't want to be after God's likeness. Man chose to be a servant. Not as, but in the likeness. What does that mean? That means he made himself in this image to where he could be. He was able to be tempted. He put himself in a body, he took on the mindset of a servant to where he would put himself in the position to where he could be tempted like we are tempted. And that's what Paul was trying to tell us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Paul would say, says, for we are not in high priest, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I under with the feelings about he, had, he don't got no infirmities. We got the infirmities. 
But when he put, but when he took upon himself the form of a servant, he says, when he took upon that form of a servant, he says, I am the living word of God, but I'm going to be able to feel the infirmities that man feels. I want to be able to feel what man feel and still defeat it. He took upon himself the form of a servant. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points, I don't care what direction temptations come, if you are living the word of God, it will prevent you from being stubborn to where you won't fall. You should come out of every trial, every test, just as faithful as you entered it. If you know you're being faithful to God and you find yourself in a situation to where you're being tempted, you should be able to come out of that because Joseph came out of it. Daniel came out of it. The three Hebrew boys came out of it. How did they come out of it? Faith in the living word of God. Did, 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 did they have the Bible? Did, did, they didn't have the Bible. So, so, that, so that's telling us it, it, ain't, it ain't about the Bible. It ain't about the Bible. But what it is about, but, but, what the, but the beauty of the Bible is, is, that, is that we learn about the life of Christ through the Bible. And y'all and, and y'all been listening to it and you've been reading it and you've been hearing it, but yet somehow the life that it talks about ain't made its way into your life. We have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the he can, you know when when before he became before God became a man before God put himself made himself in the likeness of men and when he took upon him the form he 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 couldn't feel our infirmities he couldn't feel them because God is a righteous God God is a pure God God is a holy God God is light and in him is no iniquity at all so he says I I got I got to go down there I got to put myself in man's form in order for me to save man, I got to become in the likeness of a man. I'm not going to become man. I'm going to come in the likeness of a man. And that's what this verse says. He was made in the likeness of men. He didn't become, he didn't become, he became in the likeness of men. What is the likeness of men? A, a, a living soul. He became, he, he, said, he said, I'm a living spirit, but I'm going to become a living soul. I'm going to I'm going to take myself out of eternity and I'm going to subject myself to, to time and the elements of time. I'm going to humble myself and become a servant to time and, and creatures of time. And then I'm going to die for these creatures in time. And if these creatures that are that are servants in time, if they'll believe in me, then I can take them into the second eternity with me. But they don't want to come into the second eternity with me because they're stubborn. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted. He was tempted. You better shut up calling yourself a born-again believer if you can't make it through the temptations that you find yourself in. If you can't make it through the temptations that you find yourself in, God will not put upon, God will not tempt you above that you are able, but he will with the same temptation make a way of escape for you that you'll be able to bear it if you can't escape it. It's because you're being stubborn to the living word of God that you know. We have not a high priest. Born again believers, we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, 
but was in all points tempted like we are yet without sin. Why can we not make it through temptation without sinning? I'm going to tell you why we can't make it through temptation without sin. Because we're stubborn. We got this illness of stubbornness that is very dip, that is that has become very difficult for the word of God that we know to remove from us to cure us of. And that's why, that's why, that's why my, my verse here, that's why the verse here says, salvation could do no mighty works in his city, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them, and salvation marveled because of their stubbornness. And he went about the villages teaching because he couldn't heal nobody because everybody was too stubborn to believe who he was. Luke 24, verse 36 through 53. After Jesus was raised from the dead, after he was raised from the dead, he came to his disciples and as they were speaking, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. The living word that had been crucified in the body of Jesus now stood before them in the body of Jesus raised from the dead. It is not difficult for God to raise you from the dead. What makes it difficult for God to raise you from the dead is your stubbornness. The two thieves hanging to the left and the right of Jesus, one of them stayed stubborn, the other one operated in faith. And this guy, this and Sister Selena, this guy that Jesus says, surely this day you'll be with me in paradise, didn't have no dog on Bible either. As they spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen the Spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Because when thoughts arise in your heart, they're arising to give your stubbornness power. Power to not believe that that's Christ standing in your midst. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Be, handle me and see, for I, here you go, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, here it is right here, here it is. These are the words which I spake unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the Bible. Which were written in the law of Moses. Watch this right here. Any living thing outside of the word of God was caused by the illness of stubbornness. Moses, Moses, where do you think Moses got Genesis through Deuteronomy from? Somebody was talking to Moses in order for Moses to write Genesis through Deuteronomy. But y'all would y'all would prefer to obey what Moses wrote in Genesis Deuteronomy in Gen from that Moses wrote from Genesis 
to Deuteronomy than to try to get the to to know the person to get in the relationship with the person that told Moses how to write that. And that was exactly what Peter and them was doing on the Mount of Transfiguration. They, 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 didn't, they, didn't, they didn't want to get to know the word made flesh. They, they wanted to build a tabernacle for Moses, and they wanted to build a tabernacle for Elijah, which who you think made Elijah and Moses the men that they were? The living word of God. These are the words which I spake unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Not concerning the Bible, concerning me. Not concerning Genesis to Malachi, concerning me. Concerning me. Then opened he their understanding. You, you, know, you, know, you know why he had to open their understanding? Because stubbornness was blocking it. Oh, the Bible says it, amen, in Romans 10 and 14, it says, how can they hear without a preacher? But, but, the, but the problem today is the stupid preachers, they want to talk Bible, but they don't want to, but they don't want to talk Christ. Because they don't know him. Because they don't know him. And the reason why they don't know him is because of the illness of stubbornness. Any living outside of the word of God Mm -mm, I didn't say the Bible. The Bible is not the word of God. The Bible testifies about the word of God. Any living outside of the word of God, because the Bible can only give you knowledge. You have to, you have to believe the words of the Bible that speaks about Christ. Any living outside of Christ is, is caused by illness of stubbornness. Then Jesus, the word of God made flesh, opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, that they might understand the Bible. The Bible this is 66 books of scripture, 39 Old Testament books, 27 New Testament books of scripture that testify to the life of Christ. We see the people in it that allowed the word to live in them, how prosperous they were, and we see the people in it that did not allow the word to live in them, and we see the destruction that it brought them. And you today have one of these. And I'm trying to figure out if you have allowed the words in the scriptures that's in it to become your living. Because, 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 because if you're a truck driver, you, you, you learn how to drive a truck, so you live in the truck driver life. But you ain't reading no truck driver books. If you're if you're if you're an IT person, you you I mean you 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 can fix people's computers without going back to the book that taught you how to fix computers. If you're a medic, you you know how to you know how to you 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 know when you when you finna do a person's high blood pressure and and, and check their pulse, you ain't going back to no doggone book saying I, I, let me, how how in the world do I. Take this person's blood pressure. How in the world do I check? You ain't going back to no book because you you know how to live it. Oh yes, Sister Tanisha Pratt, you gotta read it and live it. Sister Tanisha Pratt, this this people running around talking about, girl, I read my Bible every day. I don't care if you read your Bible every day. I listen to my Bible every day. I don't care if you listen to your Bible every day, because I'm gonna tell you. The, the reading, as I'm reading the life you live in, it ain't, it ain't what the Bible talked about. Let's see it again. You're the only Bible some people are ever going to read. You are an example. You're the only Bible. So, 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 if, the, so if you're reading the Bible and, and, you, 
and you and you say that the Bible is a beautiful scriptures that talk about the word of God, then I want to know why people aren't reading you the way you're reading it. Yeah, you know why. You know why, because you ain't living it. You're reading it, but you ain't living it. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. See, I'm hoping you under I'm hoping you understand. Prayerfully today, the word has transformed your mind about scripture versus the living word of God. Paul, I mean, I mean, first Timothy, second Timothy chapter four, verse two says, preach the word be instant in season and out of season. He ain't talking to uh to to the Five-fold ministry. He, when, 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 when Timothy's telling the church that he, he, he's talking to born-again believers, he said, preach the word, be instant in season. What, what does it mean to preach the word? You live that thing. You, it, it, preaching ain't about you. You, you, you standing in some stupid poor pit. Everybody want to be preachers. I mean, that's what's wrong today. We got the raggedest preachers standing in the pulpit. Sorry, preach. I'm going to tell you, we got some sorry preachers in God's pulpit. But God going to deal with them. God going to deal with them because I'm going to tell you, their life outside of the pulpit does not match the life that they're talking about in the pulpit. The lives don't line up. They're, they're living two different lives. They're living two different lives. And, and, and God, and I'm going to tell you something right now. God is starting to expose it. All we got to do is just keep on uh, living the Christ life. And as you live the Christ life, God is going to start exposing these people that are not living the word. God exposed Achan. I'm going to tell you something. Noah, Noah better be glad that the word says that my word will not return unto me void. The only reason why Noah, I mean Jonah, Jonah, not Noah, Jonah. The only reason why Jonah's tail was able to come up out of the, the, the mouth of that fish was because the word of God had told him to go to Nineveh. And this hard-headed joker was stubborn. He was stubborn because he, he had a problem with the doggone Ninevites. And the problem he had, he was too stubborn to go to Nineveh and preach the gospel. Man of God from Judah was too stubborn to not go back to Bethlehem and eat. He still went back anyway. He was too stubborn. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, stubbornness Stubbornness is killing y'all. Because stubbornness comes to, to test the, the, the life that you have gained from Scripture. Stubbornness is going to test your life. Pastor Red is full of stubbornness Every day, the scripture that I know, the life that I live, gets tested to see if I'm not going to obey it. Every day I have to, every day I have to, I have to keep my flesh under subjection, lest that when I'm through preaching to others, I myself must be a castaway, because I know that I'm fighting my own stubbornness. He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written. Written where? In the Bible. Who's telling us that this stuff is written in the Bible? The living word of God. The living word of God said unto them, thus it is written about me. Thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, 
and that repentance and remission of sins should be priests in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. But I know what your Bible says, and I know what your preacher says, and I know what your pastor says, and I know what your bishop says, and I know what that false apostle that it ain't no apostles no more is saying. They saying that the tithes and offering should be priests. They saying that you should go to church on Saturday on the Sabbath day to be priests. You you shouldn't wear this and you shouldn't wear that. Is what should be priests. Mm -mm, no 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 no. The, the the living word of God gives us specific instructions in righteousness as to how we should live. And he tells the people that he has put in the fivefold ministry. He tells us that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You do not have to be a preacher. You do not have to be a pastor. You do not have to be sitting and be, be, being a part of some stupid clergy to preach repentance and remission of sins to the people that do not know the life that you live. He said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high and he, no, 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 not, not power from reading the Bible. Uh-uh. No, no. But power from believing what's written in the Bible about me. And he led them as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed him, he parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Stubbornness has prevented believers from living these words and being witnesses of these things. All believers want to do today is witness, is, is tell people that they, 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 they you got the, you got the, the pro athletes and they'll, they'll get on TV and the, and the first words out their mouth is, I want to give uh, glory to Jesus Christ who's Lord and Savior my life which ain't nothing but a straight up lie because the, because the next thing you know, you see them with a woman on their hip and a woman on their shoulders, amen, and, and they ain't even in, 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 in marital bliss with them. Then you'll see the, 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 the Stephen Kevers and his wife and, they, and they, they, they'll talk all Christ, but they're, they're doing everything the world doing. And you know what y'all and y'all 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 so embarrassed to call people out. And and the reason why you're embarrassed to call people out is because all you do is read the Bible. And and you think because you read the Bible that you think you got it going to and, and you think because you go to church that, that you got it going on. When you and God know that you don't live what you read, that you don't live what you listen to, that you don't live what you talk. You and God know it. You and God know it. That's why he says, with your mouth you say, Lord, Lord, 
but your heart is very far from me. And what's keeping our heart very far from him is stubbornness. We just are stubborn people. That's why I told you, transgress, transgression is failure to obey known truth. Tra the, 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 another word for transgression is stubbornness. You, you, you just too, you're just too stubborn to obey known truth. You st you, you st you, you're still going to go out there and do stuff that, that, that you know the word of God written in the Bible says for you not to do. But you know word. You know scripture. You know, but you don't know how to live it. And the reason why you don't know how to live it is because it ain't in you. Because if it was in you, then it would do the living without you. That's why I said Christ who is our life. Christ is our life. Will you let Christ be your life and stop being stubborn? Will you stop being a stubborn believer and start letting Scripture? But y'all, you know what y'all, y'all run up and y'all, y'all say, "Out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water." You lying? You know, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing, ain't nothing flowing out of your belly but a bunch of stubbornness. Because you know, because 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 to to you the, the the word of God is it's too hard to, for you to live. You 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 just can't live it because because at some point the word of God is going to is going to have to take you through through these waters where where you're gonna have to separate yourself from friends. You're gonna have to separate yourself from family members. You're gonna have to say stuff to your family members that they're gonna hate you. That they're gonna throw you in a pit. Then they're gonna sell you into slavery. You're going you're gonna to have, you're gonna have to, the, the word of God, the anointing on you, it's going to be so strong that, that, that your brothers and sisters, they're going to be fighting spiritual warfare. And then you're going to come up to see the spiritual warfare. And they're going to know that the anointing on your life is giving you victory over your life. And then when you come up there, and then just to bring them some, and then they're going to say, why are you up here? At the front of the battle, shouldn't you be home watching the sheep? But 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 but, but Goliath wouldn't have never been defeated of David when it came up there. David didn't go up there to, to fight Goliath. David didn't go up there to mess with Goliath. David said, "Read your Bible." David said, "I'm gonna go up there and take my brothers something to eat because I know they fighting the Philistines." He knew they was fighting the Philistines, but he didn't know nothing about Goliath until he got up there. Because if David would have knew something about Goliath, then David would have said, "Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defied the armies of the living God?" That's what I'm trying to tell you. You 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 think you 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 keep on thinking that just because that person say that they are born again believer, that they're a born again believer. Yeah, you might be a born again believer, but you ain't. But your mind your mind has not been transformed to match your the words out of your mouth. You still got the mind of the fallen nature of Adam. But you know all type of scripture. But yet you're too stubborn to obey it. Part two. Thursday night, we're gonna do part of, I ain't done with it. No, God said no. We're gonna God said he gonna God said he when he when he get done with this series. You're going to understand that you and these 66 books don't impress God. God is not impressed by you in these 66 books that you talk about. God is only impressed with the testimony that you got about him that you should have got an understanding of from this. This, 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 nowhere, nowhere in this, will you, will this say that, that whoever believes in the Bible shall be saved? <laughs> nowhere will you find that. No, who, whosoever believeth, the Bible says, whosoever hath the Son hath life, not whoever has the Bible. Whosoever has the Son have life. Whosoever have not the Son have not life. You know, 1 John 5 and 12, you better read it. 
First John 5 and 12. Whoever have the Son have life. Not whoever, whoever have Bible knowledge have life. Bible knowledge don't give you life. You ain't living it. You ain't living it. You, you, I'm going to tell you something. You, I'm, 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 somebody listening to me today is still walking around with a nasty, unforgiving heart towards somebody in their family, somebody that done done them wrong, uh, some political party member, some, somebody, that, and, and, you, and Pastor King taught it this morning, your love ain't going to make it if it ain't God's love. You ain't got the love of God, you're not going to make it. And the only way you can have the love of God is you got to have God's son. And the only way to have God's son is to eat God's son. And when you eat God's son, he will give you the strength to walk in the word and in the faith of what you ate. And we plan around thinking that we know who God is. And, and yes, you do know who God is. But does God's son do the living for you? Or do you do the living? Who does the living for you? You know, you know, don't forget, forget a pastor rat. You know, forget pastor rat. Who, pastor rat ain't nobody but a, but a messenger. Forgive me, you can, you can disagree with me, you can hate me, you can never come on in and listen to me preach again, but that still does not free you from the fact that you better hope before you give up that doggone breath of life in your nostrils, you better hope that God's son is living in that breath. You better hope that. Take it how you want to take it. Oh yes, sisters Tanisha, obedience to what you read in the Bible is how we get to know God. You're exactly right. Reading this thing and not applying the obedience in, in Jesus Christ is the obedience of God. You will not find nobody else in the Bible that was obedient to Jesus Christ than Jesus Christ. The reason why the three Hebrew boys was obedient was because they believed. The reason why Daniel was obedient was because he believed. The reason why Noah was obedient was because he believed. You got to believe in the only begotten Son of God that we learn about through Scripture. We got to take these Scripture, we got to read them, and then we got to do exactly what the word says, watch, 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 watch the word. That's why I said the word of God is living, not the Bible. That's why, this, that's why it says right here. It says, then verse 45. Don't forget this verse. Luke 24 and 45. Write this down. Then the living word of God opened he the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Without the Holy Ghost, without God's Son, without faith, without instructions and righteousness, you're never going to understand the scriptures. You're just going to read them. But if you don't show God that you are willing to lay down your will for his will, you're never going to, you're never going to understand the scripture and you're never going to experience a life of peace. You will be miserable all the way up to the day that somebody puts you six feet on the ground in a casket. You will be miserable. And that is, that is so wrong for you to have walked around professing Christ for 20, 30, 40, 50 years and you die and he never lived in you because you was too stubborn to lay down your life and believe him for everything. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you Thursday night at 7 p.m. with part two of the illness of stubbornness.
something that's difficult to remove or cure. And before and before Thursday night gets in, we do part two. I, I want if you'll do me a favor, just do Pastor Red a favor. You you really you really make my you really bless my heart. If if you'll take just this definition of stubbornness and spend some time with it before I come back before you Thursday night. Will you, will you take the definition of stuff? Will you take something that's difficult to remove or cure, and then and then take that and use that as a mirror, and and then and then talk to God and say, God, what is it? What is it that's in my life that's still difficult? That the Word of God is having a difficult time trying to remove or cure in me what is it what is it god do that for me before thursday and and i tell you in 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 per chance just maybe part two of this message may you may just get your answer i don't because i don't know what you're gonna i don't know what you're gonna talk to god about about this definition but per chance he, he might answer that for you thursday night so I want to make sure that I set you up for success to ask God, what is it in your life that's difficult for him to remove or to cure that needs to be removed and cured? And then Thursday night, hopefully the, 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 when the word comes forth, you, you, you'll, you'll get to, if you don't get it before then. God bless you. I love you. Thank you, Sister Selena, for, for commenting on good teaching. Amen. The name of Jesus. I love every last one of you. I'm going to tell you something right now about Pastor Red. Pastor Red knows the living word of God. You'll not see me falter. You'll not see me falter. I understand the temptations that I face as a pastor. In every temptation that I face, when the first thing I say to that temptation is I say, I got people that listen to me every Thursday and every Sunday, and them people are expecting to hear out of the mouth of somebody that is not fake, that is not false. That is what keeps me faithful to God because I tell God I want to be faithful to you and I don't want to be fake in the pulpit before the people that love me and that support this ministry. Thank y'all for being here today. I'm nothing without you, but I'm everything with you. We, I want to see every last one of y'all on the other side of the grave living on the new earth. You deserve to live on the new earth. You deserve to receive eternal life. You know why? Because you, because you, you, you're hearing it, and if you'll just don't be stubborn to it, then you will receive the promise of the Father. Let us pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. I want to thank you for everybody that's here today that heard this word. I thank you, God, that from this day forward, that their mind has been transformed about scripture versus who the scripture talks about. For them to stop the thinking that reading the Bible is, is what it's all about when it's really living the Bible is what it's all about. That the word has to become our life in order for us to please you. 
Because in the beginning was your word, and your word was with you, and the word was you. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And if we've been eating him, then we should be full of grace and truth. Thank you for my audience. Thank you for those who are going to hear this message on YouTube and on Facebook. And we thank you in advance for part two that's coming Thursday night. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I will see y'all Tuesday at 7 p.m. with Pastor King. Then I'll be back before you Thursday night with part two of the illness of stubbornness, part two. God bless you. I love you. Amen and amen.